Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So about a year ago, I did a review on the rifle that you see right here. This is the Blackout Defense Quantum DTL. And I left that review with some mixed opinions about this gun because during the time I was testing it, it was very reliable, didn't have any malfunctions. It was very smooth shooting, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get into here in a bit. And overall, I just think it was a very well-built rifle. It's got very tight tolerances, and I think it is aesthetically pleasing as well. It is very futuristic looking. It kind of gives me Imperium of Man vibes to it. And much like the LAS gun, I think the AR-15 is timeless and will still be in service well past we are all gone. And humanity is colonizing conquering the galaxy and i think we're going to be doing that with mars pattern ar-15s now despite all this i still had some concerns about this particular rifle the first of which is something that they actually fixed even though it wasn't really a problem it's more of a personal preference thing as you can see this rifle does not have a forward assist which is something that they purposely neglected because they didn't deem that it was necessary for the design because the designer of this gun was an aerospace engineer very much like eugene stoner the original creator of the ar-15 who also didn't believe that the design needed a forward assist I personally like them. I've used them quite a few times when I was in the military and now as a civilian shooter, mainly because now I am a gun reviewer and I purposely neglect guns to kind of get some data points and see where they start to fail. But if you own an AR-15 and you're gonna trust your life with it, I'd highly, highly recommend that you clean your gun. You should be cleaning your rifle. My buddy Evan, a former Ranger buddy of mine over at Nocturne Kinetics, I think he says it best where professional soldiers don't brag about how little they clean their guns. You should be cleaning your AR-15, but sometimes in battlefield conditions and when you're dealing with mud, dirt, grime, debris, you're tired, you're hungry, sometimes it is difficult to clean your rifle. Also, if you consider if you're running these guns suppressed, you're going to shove a bunch more carbon back in the system, which is gonna require you to clean these things more. Now, aside from that, and more seriously, in my opinion, was that I found that this rifle was under gassed. As you remember, I said, this is a very smooth shooting rifle. It is, which is indicative of a rifle that is under gassed. Um, if you look at any video review on the Quantum DTL that doesn't have an adjustable gas system, which they do offer an option that has one, which I think they could do a little bit better of a job choosing which adjustable gas system that they're using, which we'll get into here in a shortly. But when it comes to rifles that are set up the exact same way as here with the fixed gas system from Blackout Defense, they're under gas. You can see that the shells are ejecting swiftly to the rear across any video that I've ever seen on these guns. I've seen quite a few videos where the cameraman or camerawoman is standing in this position where they think that they're safe from that brass, but you can see that brass hitting directly at the camera. So it is a very common thing with these rifles. And I brought it up to the owner after the review and he swiftly rebuked me saying, well, the reason for that is because these guns are meant to be suppressed, which was news to me. Um, I didn't see that anywhere on their website saying that these are like suppressor host guns. And it kind of made sense to me. It's like, oh, if I throw a can on this thing, it should fix the gassing issue. And that makes some sense. So I shot this rifle off and on throughout the year until I got my can, because at the time that I actually did the review on this gun, I didn't have one. So I was shooting this thing unsuppressed. And in my time shooting this thing without a can, it was reliable to a point until I got to about that magic like thousand round count. And I started having some issues where the bolt wasn't wanting to go into battery all the way. And that would have been nice to have a forward assist at that time. Um, some people have argued that you don't really need a four assist that there's like, you can use this little divot in the bolt right here to like push it forward with your thumb, which like, Fuck that. I would rather have the easy button to do that for me. Now, fast forward a few months, I ended up getting a can or cans. I also have a dead air Wolverine, but this is the suppressor that I've been using on my AR-15s. And this is a dead air Sandman S. And the first gun that I put it on is my Recce IAR. If you haven't seen the video on this gun, you should. I think that this rifle is super badass. This is a 14.5 
mid-length gas system AR that is purpose built to be an auto rifle. How it does this is it has heat sinks wrapped around the barrel as well as a gas tube, which are designed to pull heat away from those different components. So you're not gonna have a issue where you're using this rifle for prolonged firing, which is what an IAR is meant for, an infantry automatic rifle. When you're putting down suppressive fire, you don't wanna have your gas tube bursting or your barrel bursting or anything like that. So these heat sinks really help mitigate that issue. But the main thing that I really have been nerding out about this gun with is its gas system. It has a rifle speed adjustable gas block up here. So you can finally tune this rifle to shoot different types of ammo or if you're shooting it suppressed or not. Now the rifle speed adjustable gas block has 12 different gas positions. And what I found with this particular rifle with a 14.5 barrel with this particular gas system and the ammo that I was using, that position nine to seven were like the optimal position positions when running this gun unsuppressed. When I threw a can on it, I found that positions three and four were the best positions when running a can on it because again, you're putting a lot more back pressure on the system. And this thing allows you to quickly adjust to whatever type of ammo you're using or if you're running a can or not. Now, after experiencing the pure joy of shooting a suppressed AR-15 with that rifle speed adjustable gas block, I decided to give this rifle another crack and to kind of go with what the owner suggested is throwing a can on this thing. Now that I finally had a can, I threw my Dead Air Sandman S on the Blackout Defense Quantum DTL and the results were kind of surprising and started to make me think like, what is actually the best way to suppress a DI AR-15, to have a gun that's purpose built to be a suppressed AR, or to have an adjustable gas block like you see here on the Recce IAR, which is better. We'll talk about it, but before we do, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by PARD. Who is PARD? Well, they make excellent civilian night vision and thermal devices like rifle scopes, clip-on devices, monoculars, as well as binoculars like the ones that you see right here. This particular device is their Harrier 480 binocular, and I was actually kind of blown away by this thing. This isn't really a tactical style binocular since it is quite large, but still, it will fit inside of a large GP pouch like you see right here on this plate carrier. This is actually the plate carrier that I'm gonna be using at a future Milsom West event and I might take this thing out even though it's not really a um, kind of tactical binocular. This thing is actually quite good. It has very good quality when it comes to the image so you can actually see what you're looking at. One of the biggest problems I've seen with people running thermals, especially cheap thermals, is that they become kind of schizophrenic where they see a bunch of heat signatures and everything is an enemy. I cannot tell you how many times that I've chased after just deer. This thing has quite excellent zoom, has a bunch of different vision modes as well. Black hot, white hot, uh, red hot, all the ones that you would expect out of a quality thermal. It also has really good recording capabilities, which is how you're seeing the footage right now. I think this thing would be great while at your patrol base or an OP and are scanning an area. If you want to pick one of these things up for yourself, go check them out at PARD and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Well, there are two banthas down there, but I don't see any. Wait a second. Now, I'd also like to mention that all of the ammunition used in the filming of today's video was provided by Badlands Munitions thanks to you guys because I have a discount code there. If you go to the website and use code BLUEGEN at checkout, it gets you a discount there and it helps out the channel because the more ammo that you guys buy, the more they are willing to send me. So go check out Badlands Munitions and let's get back in this video. All right guys, so what was it like to finally shoot this rifle in the configuration that it was intended for, to be suppressed? Well. It kind of like took me back a little bit and I kind of had to think on this for a while because when I threw a can on this gun, it sort of reversed the problem that it was originally having with it being undergassed because when you throw a can on this thing, specifically this Dead Air Sandman S, and this might be mitigated if you use a different can, but this gun came with a pin and welded uh, Dead Air Flash Hider, so I was gonna use a Dead Air can on it. I found that it was slightly overgassed when I threw a can on here, which is fairly common when you throw a suppressor on an AR-15, especially if you compared it to if I threw a suppressor on like my Daniel Defense Block 2, if I didn't modify it at all because that gun comes overgassed, and if I threw a can on it, it would exasperate the problem. I had the same issue when I was in the military using an actual Block 2 when I was in Ranger Battalion. The guns were very gassy. Uh, this gun, was okay. It was slightly overgassed, 
but I wasn't getting gas back in the face or anything like that. It definitely wasn't as smooth as when I run a can on the Recce IAR where I can adjust the gas block to run a suppressor perfectly. But again, it wasn't too bad. I wasn't getting gas back in my eyes or anything like that, but I could definitely tell there was a little bit more gas coming back, which I'll show you here in this demonstration. All right, guys, now we're gonna do a little demo of what the gassing looks like on this rifle versus my Recce IAR, which has the rifle speed adjustable gas system. All right, guys, first off, unsuppressed blackout defense quantum DTL. Let's give it five rounds. All right, so as you guys can see, it was ejecting rearward, which is indicative of it being under gas. So let's try it with a suppressor now. All right, guys, now we're gonna try it out suppress. I have the Dead Air Sandman S attached to the end here. And we'll see what the ejection pattern looks like now. So. Oh. As you can see, it was ejecting forward, which is indicative of it being over gas. So let's try it out with the rifle speed now. All right guys, now we're gonna test out the Recce IAR, which is another mid-length gas system gun, but it has the rifle speed adjustable gas system on here. Right now I have it set on setting seven, which is what I found to be one of the better settings when you're running this gun unsuppressed. So let's see what the ejection pattern looks like on this. All right, so that looks like it was going straight out, wasn't going forward, wasn't going back, so that is well gassed for this particular gun. All right, guys, now we attach the Dead Air Sandman S on here, and I still have it at setting seven. So let's see what the ejection pattern looks like with it a little bit over gas for what this gun needs when it's suppressed, and then we'll switch it over to what I believe to be the best setting. So setting seven. So as you can see, it's ejection forward. Now let's go ahead and adjust that down to setting four, which is what I found to be the best for this gun. So it's still forward. I would say that's like the combat gas setting. Setting three. So you can see that was even better. I would say when you're running this gun suppressed in like adverse conditions, setting four is what I would generally recommend where it's maybe a little bit over gas. But what I really like about this is that you can tune your gun to your specific suppressor. So if I was running a different can on here, I can adjust this thing and find out what is the best setting for my gun. I found that between three and four are the best settings for this gun, but it might be different for a different barrel length, uh, different gun, stuff like that with a different can. Like if I was using a flow through can, I would probably want to put a little bit more gas in here. So I think that is what makes this thing superior to having a gun that is just tuned out of the box to run suppressors only because who knows what type of can you're gonna be running? Who knows what type of ammunition you're gonna be using? So that's what I like the most about the rifle speed. So by the time that I started shooting this rifle suppress, I was a little spoiled by the rifle speed adjustable gas block and how great it was to shoot the Recce IAR suppressed. So when I first started shooting this gun with a can on it, I was like, man, this thing is over gassed. Yes but it really isn't that bad. It is still a very smooth shooting gun, even with a can on it, but it started making me think like, is a gun that is purpose-built to be suppressed necessarily the best way to go about suppressing an AR-15? No, and here's the reasons why. The problem that I found with a gun that is purpose-built to be suppressed is that when you take the can off of it, you're kind of taking a reliability hit. So this gun has been reliable, shooting it at the flat range, but if I was to take this thing into combat conditions, I'm not gonna want an under-gassed gun. When you throw a can on this thing, it is totally fine. It becomes a combat gas gun and almost made me think like you should just permanently suppress the rifle at this point. And that is a problem with this particular gun because as you can see, I have a pin and welded dead air flash hider on here. So I can use dead air cans. That's not a huge issue. But when I take this can off and want to use it on a different gun, I have an under gas rifle. The problem with this is this is a pin and welded 13 nine barrel. So I can't really remove this flash hider. What am I going to do? pin and weld a uh, suppressor onto this gun. I'm not gonna do that. Um, so I kind of think that if you're gonna build a gun that is going to be like purpose built to be under gas, that way you can throw a can on it and it's gonna be fine. 
Might as well just direct thread a can on it, but I can't do it with this rifle because of this and the length. I know you can mess around with different buffer weights and springs and different things like that, but honestly, I think the correct answer is the rifle speed adjustable gas block. I think this is the best one for AR-15s on the market. It is very easy to adjust on the fly. So if I wanted to take the can off of this gun, even when I have it on a lower gas setting, I can quickly adjust it to the position that I know of, and I still have a combat gas gun. Versus if I took the can off of this gun, I have an under gas gun. To be honest, guys, I think that the rifle speed adjustable gas block is the new standard when it comes to suppressing an AR-15 effectively. I have been a huge fan of adjustable gas blocks over this past year. I also have experience shooting one on an AK, the Texas Weapon Systems IK-103 that I shot at Clash Bash also has an adjustable gas block on it, which I adjusted to finely tune to run a suppressor at that match, and it was phenomenal, especially when compared to running a can like on my Kalashnikov USA AK-103, which is pretty jarring when you run a can on that thing, and I really wanted a adjustable gas block on that thing, and I think that they are really cool. I know there's some people who argue against adjustable gas systems on their rifles and they kind of just want one and done and that way it's like grunt proof but if you're a civilian you hold yourself to a higher standard than a grunt okay um, you are more self-reliant and you should be able to quickly adjust this thing to your specific needs and know which gas setting is which i've seen some people argue about it's like what if this thing gets bumped and puts on the wrong gas setting well you know, just adjust it. I've never had that happen and there's big numbers on here. So I know that four is the best position for running a can on this gun. So if it's off of position, just like quickly adjust it to four. Uh, one thing I'll also note about this one is that despite shooting thousands of rounds through this gun, this thing's not getting stuck or anything like that. I know certain adjustable gas systems can get kind of grimed up and hard to move. After a couple thousand rounds, this thing is totally fine. Well, that's about it, guys. I just wanted to share my thoughts on how to best suppress a DI AR-15. And I definitely think that the rifle speed adjustable gas block is the way to go and is the new standard. I really want to see more high-end AR-15s utilizing the system because I think it is awesome. This gun is still nice to shoot with a suppressor on it, even without this thing, but it's not as good as this gun. And I definitely want to give this gun the rifle speed treatment because I just want this thing to be a little bit more versatile. That way, if I'm not running a can on it, it is still going to be a decently like combat gas gun that I could rely upon. If you guys have different thoughts on how to best suppress a DI AR-15, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys have to say and what your guys' setups look like. But in my opinion, I think that the rifle speed adjustable gas block is the way to go now in 2024 and is the new standard. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, the best way you can support the channel is dropping a like and subscribing, and also hit that notification bell. The second best way is to go to Badlands Ammunition, use my discount code BLUEGEN at checkout, get you a discount there, and it helps out the channel because the more ammo that you guys buy, the more they're willing to send me. Also guys, if you want to get involved with the channel even more directly, I got Patreon, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel, and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.